All right, gang, we're back for another recap here. This is WrestleMania Night 2, Philadelphia, PA, Lincoln Financial Field, April 7th, 2024. We're going to start out with God Bless America, but I have no idea who, some sort of, somebody won a Grammy. I don't know. I remember when the stars used to do this. Like, you know, people who, like, maybe it's their celebrities or somebody, but or like Ray Charles and Aretha Franklin and shit did it. Now we get fucking Coco Jones and some other person, people that I've never seen in my life. But whatever, I digress. Uh, after that, Stephanie McMahon comes down, riles up the crowd, asks him, are you ready? Uh, now we get the first championship match. This makes sense. We're going to bookend the show with the both men's championship matches. Uh, Seth versus Drew. Drew comes out and play him in with the bagpipes. Um, and Drew comes out with the Mummers from the Philadelphia Mummers Parade. That was cool. I thought that was really good. Hopefully they make an ultimate addition to him. That would be cool in that getup. Uh, good match. But a lot of... One thing I can't stand anymore is like, for some reason in matches, we need to... Especially like pay per view matches, we need to, to do our finishers like 50, 15, 20 times. Like, did Drew really need to hit? I don't understand what kind of storytelling it is for Drew to hit him with like six claymores throughout the match. I, I think that cheapens the move. Personally, I don't understand that. And we'll get back to this as what I thought was a really good match on this card. I mean, it was a good match. Don't get it fucked up. Um, Drew ends up winning. You know, Seth seems hurt the whole time, and he, you know, he gives it his all, and Drew ends up winning, but Drew seems that instead of just leaving, he wants to fuck with CM Punk, and then he, he goes out, sits in front of where, sit at the, CM Punk was guest commentator, by the way, so he goes out, and he sits in front of Punk, and then he's, he's standing up, and Punk pulls him down off of the table, and then he takes his, brace off from the surgery or, you know, the tricep injury. He takes the brace off and beats him with it. And then all of a sudden, here comes Damian Priest music. He's coming in. He's cashing in the money in the bag. Takes him in. Gives him the south of heaven. And then that was it. Uh, Damian Priest is your new world heavyweight champion. Well, Drew McIntyre was your new world heavyweight champion, and then Damian Priest was your new world heavyweight champion. And by the way, it's Judgment Day comes out to celebrate up on the stage with Damian Priest. I don't know. Call me crazy. Does Ray Ripley with her hair down look like one of the Ramones, or is it just me? I don't know. Look at look at the look at that match and tell me, uh, at the end of that match, tell me she don't look like one of the Ramones. And then we get the six man Philly street fight. Um, Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits versus AOP and Carrying Cross. Um, this was kind of jumbled. There was okay, some okay spots here. Nothing. It, it was nothing great. Um, Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits end up winning. Oh, mm. forgot. Snoop Dogg was a guest commentator during this match, which I don't understand why in the Philly Street fight he was a guest commentator. Bubba Ray Dudley was the was a guest referee, which I think, I don't know, maybe I have misheard it, but I could have swore she said guest uh, timekeeper, but the battery came down and he refereed the match, so. I mean, they did some Dudley Boy spots. Mm. I mean, is it? I get it, played in the Philly crowd, whatever. Snoop Dogg's commentary was also classic. Nobody should give him a live mic, really. <laughs> Just saying. Oh, you get Paul Heyman talking backstage. Same old shit. Um, next up is AJ Styles versus LA Knight. Actually, uh, so storytelling wise and match wise, I thought this was maybe the best match on on both nights. Really, we have one finisher. One, uh, you know, they wrestled about what I thought the match should have been about, 15, 20 minutes or so. You know, they got it in. They didn't have to, you know, keep spamming their fucking finishers for whatever. Like, you know, we, we told we told a story. L.A. Knight wins, hits him with the blunt force trauma, and that was the end of that. 
<laughs> so when LA Knight came out, there was, uh, he, he gave away, you know, lady won the Slim Jim fucking car, and he gives her the keys. Well, they show this other section. Something that, that they did a grant for, the long boy fan section. Well, as they're paying it through, there's a dude, it's all guys with, people with Slim Jims, men and women, and then there's some dude deep throating a fucking bunch of Slim Jims. Classic. I'm sure they will cut that out of the fucking rebroadcast and shit. Then we show the, the then they bring out the Hall of Fame inductees, U.S. Express, Bull Nakano, Paul Heyman, Thunderbolt Patterson, uh, The Rock's Grandma, Lady Maivia, oh, and Muhammad Ali. Forgot about Muhammad Ali. Next up is uh, Triple Threat for the U.S. title. Logan Paul versus Randy Orton versus Kevin Owens. This was a decent match. It was, I think, great. Um, some YouTuber took an RKO on the, on the announce table. Um, usual shenanigans. Somebody hit a move. Uh, basically, Logan Paul won. It was a decent match. Um, he was with a frog splash at the end. He caught somebody... He, he threw Randy Orton out of the ring and it was Frog Splash, and that was about. I think he pinned Kevin Owens. It, you know, I think that was the only way he was going to win that match, was shenanigans based on, yeah, you know, whatever the fuck he was. Yeah. Long story short, I didn't think he was going to win, would have beat either one of them one on one. So put them in a triple threat. Keep, I see keeping the belt on him for a while. Do something with the U.S. title. I don't want either one of them really hanging around, winning the U.S. title, them being in the mid card. They should, you know, Cody needs challengers. And that's where he's going to be a SmackDown. It makes sense that Randy Orton and Kevin Owens will both be guys vying for that belt. So instead of just, hey, let's, oh, let's keep them in the U.S. title, that would be fucking stupid. Next is uh, EO Sky versus Bailey for the women, that women's title. Uh, I don't know what was with fucking Bailey's entrance. It was like it was like these Aztec looking guys fucking carrying her to the beginning of the slope of the ramp, like for whatever reason. And then she had wings on, and they took off her wings, and then she went down. I don't. Know. It was it was weird. Uh, I I don't know. And Eo comes down. And she just you know. Nah, I don't. I can't get into EO Sky. I don't. I don't get it. I don't see it. Um, she lost anyway. Figured that. I figured they were gonna get Bailey or Flowers or whatever the fuck you want to say to make any sense. I figured she would win. It wasn't anything great or memorable, really. And then we have main event of the evening: Bloodline Rules match. Um, Cody versus Roman Reigns for the undisputed Universal World Heavyweight Championship. Oh, Brandy came down to the ring. Also notable is Charles Robinson, Little Nate, was the referee tonight, which that's the first time I had seen him, on, at least that I remember seeing him. You know, usually I could pick out Little Nate, so only made sense. Right. It was a tag. I don't know why somebody kendo sticks tonight in the fucking Philly Street fight. Everybody's hitting people with kendo sticks, and then there was a kendo stick. Roman beating Cody for a little bit with the kendo stick, and Roman got in a crossroads. That was nice. Um, wasn't a lot of a lot of crossroads in this match. We seen that. We kept building towards this. He hits him with a uh, Cody hits him with a crossroads, and then Jimmy Uso comes out, and then Jay comes out. Well, he stops him from doing it the three times. After the first one, and he, Jimmy and Jay comes out, and they're fighting, and he spears him off of the fucking ramp through a table. You can see them; they were they were done. They were Kaplitsky. I think you might have seen Jay later on, but then later, fucking Cody spears Roman through the barricade, which I thought that was going to be the other way around. So we go for another crossroads, and we get a second crossroads, and fucking. And Solo comes out, hits him with the spike. They look like they're going to pit him twice. Then all of a sudden, 
he kicks out two different things. There's a spear, and I don't know if there's a Superman punch or whatever the fuck. Um, <clears throat> John Cena's music hits. He comes out. He hits hits Roman with an AA, and then he get so well. He knocks Solo out of the ring, and then he he ends up putting so hitting an AA on Solo outside of the ring through a table. Then the Rock comes down. And the Rock and John Cena face off, and there's <coughs> the Rock hits him with a rock bottom. The Rock's about to do some damage, and then the lights go out. We hear the Undertaker a bell, and the lights go out, and then the Undertaker appears. An off-duty Undertaker appears in the ring because he didn't have any fucking ring gear on. He just he had an Under Armour hoodie and something else. I'm like, what the fuck is he doing? I guess he was off, off duty, off duty Undertaker. And we got, uh, so he hits him with a choke slam. The fucking, then the lights go out and he disappears. He like literally was in the ring for about 10 seconds. Um, well, now that the rock's gone, now we hit Cody with the, Cody hits him with the three crossroads and, Pins Roman Reigns. Now we have your new world heavyweight, new undisputed universal heavyweight champion, Cody Rhodes. I'm assuming this, you know, it, this was way better than fucking night one. I'll give him that. Oh, no, not a great WrestleMania. I guess we knew, knowing that what was going on, I don't think the rest of the card around it. It was a lot of... It was decent, man. Like I said, Night 2 was fucking 10 times better than Night 1. I thought Night 1 sucked. Night 1 would go down as, you know, if we were to rank these and, you know, technically as a separate WrestleMania, like if you were to say, I'd say Night 1 would be at the bottom of the... Like, towards the bottom of the batter of, of WrestleMania. And it didn't even feel like... The card itself didn't lend itself into that boring-ass tag team match was long and boring night one, but that I digress. All in all, night two was pretty decent. Um, all right, guys, if you like the channel, like and subscribe. Um, hit the notification bell if you want to know when we're posting. As always, thank you for watching Big T's Wrestling Reviews and Recaps, and as always, have a good one.